Oh yeah, if you want to support Bruce Montalvo and all the Montalvo Maniacs, yeah, be sure to go to paypal.com, yeah, to type in the Bruce Montalvo Show at gmail.com, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you can give Montalvo a $5 donation, $25 donation, even 25 cents, yeah, helps in the fight against the New World Order. Support the Bruce Montalvo Show. Go to PayPal.com, the Bruce Montalvo Show at gmail.com, and help out the Montalvo Maniacs, yeah. Go to Antique Obsessions for the hottest in jewelry, antiques, repurposed, solid sterling silver, one of a kind, handmade by Bruce and Jaja. Go to uh, our Facebook, which is Antique Obsessions, or you can go to Etsy.com and go to Antique Obsessions, one word, or type it into your Google and find us there. Thanks. Tribal, primitive, rustic, burning man, punk rock. Conceptual subculture for the edgiest, most cutting edge designs of jewelry today. Go to Etsy.com slash shop slash conceptual subculture. Or one word, either by going to Google or search Etsy, E-T-S-Y dot com and type in one word, conceptual subculture. You will find the hottest designs using natural stones with wire wrap rings, rough, raw, genuine, semi-precious gemstone jewelry, solid sterling silver, copper, leather, organite, bracelets, pendants, chokers, men's copper cups with sterling accents, eco-friendly, repurposed, original, one-of-a-kind design earrings. Support MBN by going to Conceptual Subculture on Etsy. With SRN News, I'm Ron DeRockstra. President Trump sending his top diplomat and Homeland Security chief to Mexico. Here's White House correspondent Greg Cluxton. Secretary of State Rex Tillerson and Homeland Security Secretary John Kelly will meet with Mexico's president amid some strains between the two countries. However, White House spokesman Sean Spicer says this is not a bid to repair a broken relationship. I think the relationship with Mexico is phenomenal right now, and I think there's an unbelievable and robust dialogue between our two nations. President Trump has insisted that Mexico will pay for a border wall, an idea rejected by Mexico's leader. Greg Clugston, the White House. Also at SRNNews.com, the Trump administration has reversed an Obama administration directive calling for schools to allow so-called transgender students to use restrooms and locker rooms that match their chosen gender identity. White House Press Secretary Sean Spicer says the administration is not going after the transgender people, it's just rendering a legal opinion in a case that's already in progress. There is a case pending in the Supreme Court in which we have to decide whether or not to continue to issue guidance to the court. We, it's not. It's it, it's dictated by that. Education Secretary Betsy DeVos says the issue is best solved at the state and local level. Water managers say they're taking advantage of a break in storms to draw water down from behind a dam that's full, causing a creek to overflow and flood parts of San Jose, California. Assistant Fire Chief Robert Sapien Jr. says while evacuation orders have been lifted in some parts of town, Others remain off limits to the public. There are uh, a few parks, mobile home parks in North San Jose that require pumping, and then there are there are some areas throughout the flood areas that will require some pumping, and we are working to identify those and working to pump into uh, open channels. Meanwhile, managers said it could take nine weeks to bring the water levels down to the point considered safe in the event of a major earthquake. This is SRN News. The Christian film is Genesis History, featuring a team of scientists verifying the historical accuracy of that book in the Bible, premieres in theaters this uh, weekend in a one-night-only Fathom event. Find a a field uh, geologist, that is, Dr. Steve Austin tells SRN News he understands the film's core audience will probably be 
churchgoers. I think that that'll be the primary uh, impact of it, but it should go outside the church as well. I think there's some people out there that need to see uh, this different point of view. Maybe God's spirit convicts them or whatever. They'll, they'll make the next step. You know, they'll recognize God is their creator and um, then they'll ask the next questions. Information on where to find the film is Genesis History for this Thursday's one night only event is at isgenesishistory.com. This is SRN News. One of America's leading newspapers has a new motto. Democracy dies in darkness. Those words appear beneath the name of the Washington Post on its website, though not yet in the print edition. Amazon.com founder and CEO Jeff Bezos used the phrase in an interview last year when asked to explain why he purchased the newspaper. Bezos said certain institutions have a very important role in making sure that there is light. Correspondent Rich Thomason. The National Conservative Political Action Coalition, or CPAC, kicked off on Thursday, and or meets, that is, uh, through the weekend, kicked off on Wednesday, and will meet through the weekend in National Harbor, Maryland. Among those scheduled to address the annual event, President Trump, Vice President Pence, Attorney General Jeff Sessions, Senator Ted Cruz, and a number of members of Mr. Trump's cabinet. More details at srnnews.com. I'm Ron DeRockstra. You walk into this room at your own risk, because it leads to the future. Not a future that will be, but one that might be. This is not a new world. It is simply an extension of what began in the old one. It has patterned itself after every dictator who has ever planted the ripping imprint of a boot on the pages of history since the beginning of time. It has refinements, technological advances, and a more sophisticated approach to the destruction of human freedom. But like every one of the super states that preceded it, it has one iron rule. Logic is an enemy and truth is a menace. Joining me, ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome, is a man that really needs no introduction. He's a rock star in the world of astrotheology. Uh, ordinary man exposing extraordinary truth, our good friend Jordan Maxwell. Hello, Jordan. Thank you for joining us today. Well, thank you for inviting me. Um, yeah, I'm still here. I'm 76 years old, but I'm, I'll be damned if I'm not still here. I'll do what I do. And, uh, I enjoy trying to teach people and educate people to wake up and use their own mind. That's what I do, and and, uh, and I enjoy doing it. And I thank you for having me on again. Absolutely. You truly bring light to a world of darkness, as you say. But uh, tell us about your new work, uh, Cosmocrats, and uh, the insidious influence, as you say. I mean, this looks like heavy-duty work, Jordan. Truly some of your best work. Well, uh, my I have two brand new videos, two brand new videos. Uh, one is called Cosmocrats, and the other is uh, Exposing a Well-Kept Secret, uh, a mystery. It's called, actually, Revealing Ancient Mysteries. And the other one is called uh, Cosmocrats. A cosmos simply means... Uh, the world, like cosmonauts. Cosmos means world, and krats means rulers, like democrats and plutocrats. So krats means rulers, and and, uh, and cosmos means world. <clears throat> and so cosmocrats simply means world rulers. I got that from uh, the Bible, and the, uh, when the Apostle Paul, writing in the book of Ephesians 6, 12, in the Bible, Old and the New Testament, 
in the book of Ephesians 6, 12, is a scripture you'll probably remember. It says, we have, a, we have wrestled, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, and against the rulers of this darkness of this world, and against spiritual wickedness in high places. Here the Apostle Paul in the Bible is saying, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. We have a war, but not against people, but against principalities, against powers, and then he says, against the rulers of darkness of this world. So the world obviously is in darkness. People have no idea in the world what's going on. They have no concept of how the world works. And so they're frustrated and angry because they know something is very bad wrong. There's no justice. I mean, even the, uh, even the lawyers and the uh, judges, I mean. Even the judges will tell you there's no justice, there's just us. Right. And so, and so people are angry, they're in the streets, they are uh, demonstrating violent demonstrations. That's right. Because they're very unhappy with the way life is working out for them and for the world in general. And people feel this anger and want to strike out and do something about it. But what, uh, what the scripture says in Ephesians six twelve, it says that we have a war or a fight against the rulers of the darkness of this world which implies that the darkness, which is the ignorance, ill-informed, unread ignorance of the peoples of this world, that causes them to eventually get involved with uh, wars and violence and gangs and drugs and alcohol and drug abuse and violence, uh, because they're, they're ill-informed. They don't know what's going on, so they just do what comes natural, whatever. And so the scripture says that we have a war against those world rulers of darkness, which implies the darkness of this world is being ruled over by some very evil but clever and highly intelligent, clever people are ruling over us. We are like cattle in the field. We are like the uh, Serengeti Plains of Africa, when you see those a thousand uh, water buffalo or zebras and animals, and there's a thousand of them. Right, all those, all those wild wildebeest. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and yet, at the same time, when you see those thousands of cattle out there on the plains, you also are seeing like about six to eight lions. And the lions are well organized, and they're hiding in the grass, and they're watching each other, what each other does, and they all know what they're doing. It's a well-laid plan among the lions. They know what they're doing, and they're getting ready to have dinner, and, some, and so they're going to kill something and eat it. And so, but the animals out on the prairie, they don't realize what's going on until the lions make the move. That's right. When they do, the people stand, the, the animals stampede. They're running in every direction. Well, that's what's happening today around the world. You see in every country, people are in the streets. They're stampeding like, uh, like animals that are being uh, you know, uh, chased by lions. And so the people are stampeding and uh, rioting, and we call it demonstrations. We call it social demonstrations. Well, the word demonstration comes from democrat. Democrat gives us demonstrations. And from the pre-Roman god demos, as I've heard That's you exactly say. Right. The demos, demonstrate. You know, Jordan, you mentioned these dark rulers, and uh, I see a, a passage here in Genesis. It says, when man began to multiply on the face of the land, the daughters were born to them, the sons of God. And uh, I'm sure you've heard it refers to the, the Nephilim and uh, the sons of God. It, it uh, says they uh, came into the daughters of man and they bore children to them. So right. 
I, I heard you state the end game of these rulers of darkness is to create a new man, almost uh, like a gray, like a, an androgynous version of man. Is that the end game? Yeah, that's it. And so in the scripture, when it says that, that the sons of God uh, saw the daughters of men, that they were fair and that they were beautiful and began uh, 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 procreating with them, it says that they, uh, it doesn't say that they, the women bear children. It doesn't say children. Uh, the, the Hebrew word, I forgot what it was now, but I remember that in the Hebrew word was not children. It was offspring. And so we just naturally, you know, the Bible translates and say, oh, well, it was offspring. <laughs> it was children. No, not necessarily. Not necessarily. If it was sons of God, if you understand what that word means in the ancient world, sons of God were aliens who looked like humans. And so if we have aliens who are not from the earth, they're from another place in the universe, but they have come here and they look like us and they created us. So in fact, they don't look like us. We look like them. Right. So that today, when we see each other as humans, we don't realize that we were created by extraterrestrial or gods, so to speak, or the sons of God, so to speak, uh, who created us. And in, in the Genesis 1, when it says that God is creating man, it says... God said, come, let us make man in our image after our likeness. Well, Christians will tell you that there is the scripture right there that shows that God created man. Because the scripture clearly says, God said, come, let us make man in our image after our likeness. But I have talked to rabbis, a rabbinical teacher, who will tell you that that's not correct. That's not reading the, uh, the sentence correctly. I remember back in 1960, uh, a very high-ranking rabbi in America and I used to carry on conversations about these things. And he said, when I read him that scripture, I said, what is the actual meaning of this in Hebrew when it says, uh, God said, come let us make man in our image after our likeness. Is that, like the Christians say, the scripture that shows God created man? He said, no, no. It doesn't, nowhere in the Old Testament does the scripture say God created man. It doesn't say that. This is what the churches have said. This is what people who don't know uh, the, the, the Hebrew words and terms, that's not what it says in the Bible. Again, all the religions of the world are basically based on on this uh, sun worship, the, they're all based. All these mythical, uh, all these mythical characters are based off of, I mean, well, Egyptian yeah, yeah, sun but gods. I, yeah, but, but but what I was saying is mm -hmm. that uh, when you read in the Bible in the Genesis, where it says that God said, "Come, let us make man in our image and our likeness," the rabbi explains it to me. No, you're not reading it correctly. Go back and read it right. What is being said in the Bible, and here's the way I to read it correctly. God said, come, let us make man in our image, after our likeness. Not make man. No, man's already here. But let's make man in our image, after our likeness. And so God recreated a creature. He took what was already here and recreated it uh, and made it look like himself. So then when you, and I, said, I don't understand that. He said, well, the reason why you don't understand that, this is you know, 60 years ago. And he said, the reason why you don't understand that is because it's a mistranslation in the English Bible. You know, you know, the uh, uh, King James Bible has over 6,500 errors in translation. And he said the classic one is right off the top, Genesis 1.1. And the English Bible is a mistranslation. It doesn't say that in, in Hebrew. 
Because in the English Bible, Genesis 1 1 says, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. But that's not what it says in Hebrew. Um, because the word in Hebrew for God is El, E L. El is God. Okay? But, and so therefore, if it was God created the heavens and the earth, then what, what it would have said in Hebrew is in the beginning, El created the heavens and the earth. But that's not what it says in Hebrew. Actually, it says in the beginning, Elohim created the heavens and the earth, not El. Elohim is a totally different word, meaning totally different. So Elohim is like adding an S onto an English word. You have car, and then you add an S becomes cars, meaning more than one. So when you add Lohim onto L, L is God, Lohim is plural. So the correct translation should be in the King James that Christians don't know, and many Jews know, but they're not saying anything. Uh, and the correct translation of Genesis 1-1 is that in the beginning, the gods, more than one, created the heavens and the earth. And this is why we are told that the Jews were God's chosen people and that the Jews worshiped one God. Well, actually, in fact, there's a difference there. There's, there's a misunderstanding. The Jews were not the first monotheistic. We're told the Jews were the first monotheistic people who worshiped one God, one God. In point of fact, that's not true at all. The Jews never worship one God. The Jews were called henotheistic, not mono. H-E-N-O, henotheistic. Henotheistic means you pick one God out of a group. So there's not just one God. There are many gods, but you pick one. So I suppose we could say you were the worshipers of one God. But there's not just one God. There are many, but you pick one. And those are the cosmocrats. Those that's are the, exactly right. the lords. That's As you said, so those are the sons. In, this is why in the, in the Ten Commandments, your God, I'm not saying your God, but I'm saying the, the Hebrew God, says in the Ten Commandments, I am the Lord, your God. Not, I am the God of all. I'm not the God of everything. But I'm the Lord God. I'm the Lord, your God. And I will not have other gods before me. He didn't say there were no other gods. No, there's plenty of other gods. But you picked me. And I agreed to it. So we have a marriage. We have a contract. You are my people and I am your God. There are other gods out there equal to me. But you picked me, so I am the Lord, your God. And I won't have any other gods before me. Well, that's like a guy telling his girlfriend he's going steady. You know, there are plenty of other guys out there. But you made a pact with me. You're going steady with me. So, yeah, there's all kinds of guys out there you can talk with and be around. But don't have anyone personally with you but me. You made a deal with me. And so that's what God is saying to the Hebrews. I am the Lord, your God. And I will not have any other gods coming in in my place. So then you find out that it's a mistranslation. El Elohim in Genesis 1-1 is God's more than one. Then, then it makes sense when you read that God is God's more than one. When God is creating Adam and Eve, the first couple... The scripture says, God said, come, let us make man in our image, after our likeness. So what's being said is that somebody, some kind of creature that came here from somewhere out there, and you can ask a seven-year-old child, where is God? They'll point the sky. God's out there. 
and ask any Christian, do you believe in angels? Yes. Well, where are angels? Are they from uh, Oklahoma or where? Where are they? <laughs> they're out there. They point out in the sky. Well, then what you're saying is that they're in heaven. That's right. They're in heaven. <clears throat> well, unfortunately, if, if God or the angels are in heaven, unfortunately, that means they're extraterrestrial. They're not from here. <clears throat> now, if the God is God, and they're not from here, that means they're extraterrestrials. <clears throat> so the bottom line here is this. What Genesis is saying is that a long time ago and far, far away, <laughs> like Star Wars, there were some entities who came here from another world, from out there in the heavens. And they came here, they were called Elohim in our, in our life meaning the gods, whoever they were, there were groups of them, and they came here, and they saw the indigenous creatures, what we call Neanderthal man, the Cro-Magnon man, whatever these, uh, today we call them scientifically hominids, these hominid creatures that walked upright, looked like they were similar to humans, but very hairy, and they were, we, were, we think of them as the uh, Cave men and, and uh, you know, cave men and people uh, from thousands of millions of years ago. Well, whatever was here on the earth, we don't know how they got here, how the cave men got here, how the Neanderthals and Cro Magnon uh, creatures got here. But somebody came from out there, extraterrestrials came from out there and they saw these. Um, uh, cro Magdon or uh, Peking Man or Neanderthals, and they said to themselves, come, let us make man in our image, in our likeness. Let him, let's crossbreed with this Neanderthal female. Let's crossbreed and put our DNA in her and impregnate her, and just for the hell of it, let's see what she gives birth to just as an experiment. And so they, they crossbreed with the, uh, with the uh, Neanderthal or the, you know, the ancient creatures on the earth, and then crossbreed with them. And what happens? Uh, she gives birth to a creature now which is half extraterrestrial and half uh, from her line. And so she's a Neanderthal. She's an animalistic a creature, but she gives birth to something that's far, far more intelligent, far more powerful. So it's half extraterrestrial. That's right, now, Jordan. Like, and it's, I don't mean to cut you off, but the Anu, the people of Egypt, the Anunnaki, Anunnaten, I mean, you, they obviously have the elongated heads. I mean, it just struck me. I mean, they were, uh, they had like uh, tele, telekinesis, all sorts of abilities that we could only begin to comprehend. Of course, of course, and that what may explain Bigfoot. That may explain the Yeti, because they look like they walk upright, they're bipedal like we are. They walk upright. They look like a human built, very big and powerful. But we have humans that look that big too, and uh, very powerful. They and were so, washed away during the time of Genesis. I mean the. The giants, uh, they were known as the Am Amalek as well. Yeah, that's right, exactly. Well, yeah, but we have professional wrestlers today <laughs> that are huge guys. They like are the big enormous show. in size. And so uh, you want to talk about, uh, 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 what's the word, you want to talk about giants? Yeah, well, you meet some of those guys who are football players that weigh like 400 and something and they're oh, six and a half, seven foot tall. They look like a giant. That's right. Well, that's just us. That's just you. Well, they never left us, Jordan. The, the the watchers, they're watching over us. They merged with us. I mean, they are uh, the the fathers of, of mankind, of humanity. And they're you still cannot, here. They're you watching us. read the Bible or accept Judaism or Christianity or Islam without knowing that. That's overwhelming and obvious in Scripture that there are extraterrestrials here who we refer to, that the, the, our teachers refer to as watchers. 
They are watching you. They are the gods. All the ancient peoples of the world realized that there were extraterrestrial other world entities here who looked like us, uh, who would appear to be men, but they were men of extraordinary abilities, very powerful men, from which we get the idea for Superman and Captain Marvel and Spider-Man to do all kinds of things. Well, you see in, in Superman, there's a character called uh, Saturn Girl or something like that. You see Saturn again. I mean, we you're an expert at exposing this, the symbolism of uh, the, the Saturnalian cult of Saturn. I mean, you, we're talking about it right now. It's hell-bent on totalitarianism. I mean, you see it in the socialist states, like you said earlier, the democratic, democratic people's republics, all yeah. that. Explain that. Well, but what, what, what's actually being said and what you're actually in fact seeing is that the human race is being uh, uh, treated like cattle. They are, they are frightening us and scaring us into the corral. They've got a corral all lined up, all the, the walls and all the fences, and now they are frightening you and scaring you because the boogeyman is going to get you. And so we have to protect you. The United Nations is going to come in and protect you from the bogeyman. And so <laughs> they, are, they are scaring all the cattle. They, you know, they, they, they look at us as cattle. And so they are, they are frightening us and, and ushering us into a corral. And then they lock the gate. And now we are in, under one government. And whoever owns that corral now owns us. And we will, if they allow us, we will drink. If they allow us, we will live. If they allow us, if they're selling our bodies, if we are a, a commodity on the on the open market, well, that's why if you're looking for a job, you are not unemployed. You are a human resource. Why? Because they are buying and selling you, and you are a resource. We have iron and rubber and oil and uh, steel and concrete and you. You are a resource. So when you understand that the world we live in is ruled by people who will tell you they have a divine right of kings. What do you mean divine right of kings? Where did that concept of kings come from? Well, it goes back to in the biblical days. It goes back to the time when the Nephilim, the Anunnaki, he were, they were here. They came from another world. They came from out there, because that's what God and the angels are, out there. Yeah, out there. Heaven. And again, the Anu, Koranu, uh, you see the Koran? Anu. It's right that's there, exactly as I've heard right. you state. The very word Koran has in the word A-N, An. And Anu was an ancient uh, God of the ancient uh, and the ancient biblical times. And today, even Anu is understood to be a very important god in the, and what is called the Theogony, the Theogony of Hesiod. And the, and the listing of ancient gods, Anu is one of the main gods of the ancient world. And so from there we get Anunnaki. And the, so the bottom line at the end of the day, after you've heard everything, at the bottom line, we humans were designed by someone who came from out there, who came from out there, and, there's more, and there were many of them. They were called the, uh, uh, they were called the Elohim, or the gods, more than one. But they, they don't look like us. We look like them. Why? Because they said, come, let us make man in our image, after our likeness, so they will look like us. And then uh, later on in Genesis, uh, the gods talking to themselves, talking among themselves, says, look, see, man has become as one of us. Now he's like one of us. And, and we have made a mistake. We have made a mistake in creating this, this creature we call man and making him like us because now he's smart like us. Now he's building, building ray guns and lasers and rockets and got atomic bombs and atomic, you know, we, we shouldn't have done this because we, 
we've opened up a can of worms. The humanity now, is putting on the armor of God. Yeah. So now you've created a creature that reproduces itself and is brilliant, intellectually superior, and is now creating rockets and, 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 uh, and you know, all kinds of high tech from lasers to television to, uh, you know, and, and touching the universe and traveling throughout the stars. Uh, we've messed up. We've got a big problem on our hands because there's millions of them. And anything that they get together to do, the scripture says they can do. And the reason why is because of your brilliant idea of crossbreeding them with us. So we used to be the almighty gods. No, we're not the almighty gods anymore. We got some problems because they are now like us. And we and they look like us and we look like them, but they are like us in that they are intelligent and they're violent and they're smart and they're clever <laughs> and uh, and we got our hands full trying to continue to be gods over these people because they are not easily to, to be deceived and they're not going to crawl on their knees to us. So you know, we've made a mistake. We should never have made uh, man to look like us and be in our image and our likeness. So this is why the scripture says the sons of God, which are not angels. This is what you need to understand. Angels, uh, they, the, in the Jewish religion, there are many different words for uh, non-humans. And there are terms in even Christianity today people use. Uh, we call them ghosts, demons, poltergeists, devils. Uh, spirits, jinn, trickster gods, genies, uh, all of it, all kinds of words about the right. angels and spirits and demons and devils uh, that you can't see, but we know they're evil, but you can't see them. They can see you, and they're messing with you, but you don't have any idea in the world how to protect yourself from them because you can't see them. You don't know what they're doing. And they're superior to you. They can manipulate your brain, your nervous system. They can cause you to do things that will get yourself in trouble. Um, you know, and that old idea of, of the devil may be do it, it may sound funny, but actually, in fact, there may be something to that, uh, that some other spirit entity in this world that is evil has caused you to do something that was stupid, and you got yourself in horrible trouble. But it wasn't you. Something in you made you do it and got you in trouble. But whoever that spirit entity was, they're not in trouble. You're in trouble. You're the ones going to prison, not them. It reminds me of this uh, Ephesians, uh, put on the whole armor of God that may be able to stand against the wills of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against powers, against the rulers of darkness. That's what I'm saying. That's exactly my words. Rulers of darkness, meaning that the world of mankind obviously is in the dark. That's right. We're in the dark because young people all over the world are drugs, alcoholism, violent gangs, uh, wars, military. It's unbelievable. Uh, and, and, you know, all kinds of drug-related violence, etc. So the world itself, mankind, is in the dark. And so, but that's what the scripture says in Ephesians 6. It says that we have a war against the rulers of this world darkness, which means that we actually have legitimate rulers who are here on the earth who are ruling over our world. And we don't know why, because we are ignorant, ill-informed, and self-centered, egotistical, know-it-all. And any time you get uh, the pride, proceeds the fall. Any time you get someone who's That's arrogant, right. self-centered, egotistical, knows everything about everything, uh, you're looking for trouble. You don't know everything. And one day you're going to make a mistake, and it's going to really cost you. Well, the people today, they care more about the Emmys. Uh, they don't even know, as you know, that the National Academy of Television, Arts, and Sciences stands for Satan. <laughs> so that's yeah, what they I care know. about I more. They care about Satan. Yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> spell it backwards is Satan. And, you know, a lot, a lot of Christians do not know that when you talk about Lucifer, uh, I, all Christians, generally speaking, think of Lucifer as the devil. But that's not what the scripture says. That's not what the reference book, if you go to seminary or library and go to the encyclopedias and dictionaries of Christianity and look up Lucifer, it will tell you Lucifer is Jesus. That's right. They refer to them both as the morning star. That's right. And Jesus says in Revelation 22, 16, in the very last chapter of the Bible in the New Testament of the book of Revelation, go to the very last chapter in the book of Revelation, and it says, I, Jesus, so we know who's talking. I am the offspring and the, uh, and the bright morning star. Well, look up in the encyclopedia, Jewish and the Hebrew and, and Greek encyclopedia, bright morning star, and it will tell you it's a Messiah. The Messiah is the bright morning star. Well, there Jesus says in Revelation, I am the bright morning star. And so bright morning star in, in Hebrew is Helio. And Helio is the, uh, the bright morning star, which is Lucifer. Lucifer is Helio, the, the light bringer. All right, well, the light bringer, Helio or Lucifer, is actually originally uh, the planet Venus. Venus is Helio in the ancient world, or Lucifer in the Roman world. So in the early morning, uh, Romans could go out four o'clock in the morning and see in the east this bright morning star. And, and so they called it Lucifer. Well, Lucifer simply means one who brings the light. Lucifer is not the light, but he brings the light, the bringer of the light. Why? Because if you go out at four o'clock in the morning, even today, Facing the east, watch and, and, and Venus will rise. It's a very bright star, the bright morning star. But it is not bright because it's so bright. No, it's bringing the light. When you see Lucifer shining so brightly, you just understand the sun is coming up right behind it. So it always announces the coming of the sun. Of course, the sun is the light of the world. The sun lights our world. This is why Jesus is referred to as God's son, not S-O-N, S-U-N. God's son is the light of the world. Absolutely. S-U-N is the light. Jordan, he's a, Jesus is a metaphor for the sun. I mean, you have the whole metaphor of uh, Jesus walking on water. Well, early in the morning, it, that's the sun that you see rising. It's well, basically if you, if walking you, on if water. You're, if you're on the East Coast looking over the Atlantic Ocean, and you will see the sun once it comes up and it's fully up but hasn't left the surface of the, of the ocean. It hasn't left the horizon. But once it's fully up, it appears to be actually sitting on the water. That's right. And so, and then at night, if you're on the Pacific, and you watch it as it goes down, but there's a moment or two when the sun actually touches the horizon. And so we say the sun is now walking on water. Amazing. So it's, it's just amazing where these different religious beliefs come from. But the bottom line is, the, as the rabbi told me many years ago, the Bible does not say that God created man. It doesn't say that. It says God recreated man. And so when you go to Genesis, I think it's 9-1 or 6-1. I think it's 9-1. Genesis 9-1 talks about uh, what happened to Noah and his family after the flood of Noah's day. And it says in Genesis 9-1 that, the, that when the flood receded, uh, God said to Noah and his three sons and their three wives, go forth, multiply, and replenish the earth. Go forth, multiply, and replenish the earth. Well, 
when I was talking to the rabbis, they said, well, obviously, if God wants people on the earth and he's just destroyed all life on the earth with a flood, if he wants people on the earth, then people are going to have to then grows out whoever he decided to protect them and, and keep them alive, they're going to have to replenish the earth. The word is R-E, meaning do it again. And so I said, well, is that a correct translation, replenish the earth to do it again? And he said, yes, obviously, because if there were people here, they're all dead now. Uh, well, if you're going to have more people, then whoever people, whatever people are here are going to have to replenish the earth. So I said to him, well, what about Genesis 128, where the gods are creating Adam and Eve? And then, and then God says to Adam and Eve the same identical Hebrew words, the same words. Go for, uh, God said to Adam and Eve, go forth, multiply, and replenish the earth. If Adam and Eve are the first human couple, why is God telling them to replenish the earth or do it again? And he said, obviously, there have been high civilizations on this earth for millions and millions of years, if not billions of years. Well, now today, we know it's billions of years. There's no doubt in anyone's mind that there were highly developed, technologically superior, intelligent races of humans or creatures on the earth billions with a B, billions of years ago. Where do we find that? Well, for instance, in Africa, in Central and Southern Africa, they have uh, uh, mines that go down so far into the earth, these mines do, that all paleontologists around the world agree scientifically that at the deep depths that these mines go, they are in strata, which is at least three and a half billion years old. When they keep going down miles and miles and miles down, the uh, paleontologist will tell you anything that far down is three and a half billion years old. There's no discussion about that among science. Yet, those miners are finding handmade artifacts, rings, bracelets, jewelry, and strange artifacts that they're bringing up from down in, in the mines that far down which quite simply means you don't have to be an astronaut or a brain surgeon to figure it out. It means if you go down far enough into strata three and a half billion years old and you find handmade artifacts, well, logic alone will tell you that somebody was here three and a half billion years ago creating handmade artifacts, handmade metal metallurgy, handmade rings, etc., uh, well, they so still are. That's, that's what I do for a living. I make uh, jewelry, solder jewelry, you know. Yeah, <laughs> so I'm so, still making it. <laughs> yeah, well, if you were in Africa and, people, and go down, you know, miles down under the ground, and strata, which all scientists will tell you, when you're that far down, you're in strata, which is three and a half billion years old. And you're poking around down there, and you find a ring and a bracelet, and other handmade, uh, you know, jewelry, logic alone, you, like I said, you don't have to be a, a, a brilliant surgeon. No, <laughs> real quick. You don't at all, you know, real, somebody was down here billions right. of years ago. Real quick, Jordan, I just want to plug, uh, go to Antique Obsessions on uh, Etsy, that, and we're, that's who's uh, helping uh, sponsor this show. That's uh, my my company. Again, I want to be like Trump and just have made in America products, you know, because that's what's going to bring America back, right? That's it. Yes. Made in America. Uh, Jordan, uh, it's great to have you on. Uh, let's get into this uh, lunar religions. I mean, you, we mentioned, uh, uh, again, uh, ancient Hebrew, the, in the ancient Hebrew, the, some of the uh, religions, but uh, it's all lunar religions. I mean, I've heard you state uh, Yahweh and Allah, they're lunar deities. Yeah, they're literally the same God. Uh, the the Arabs call that God Allah. The Hebrews call him Yahweh, 
Yahweh and Allah are the same God. It's just the difference between Hebrews or Arabic. But Yahweh and Allah are the same God. That's why we hear uh, Islamic uh, talking about, well, Allah is actually in the Hebrew Bible. You know, and if it's right there in the Hebrew Bible, is the word Allah. To which I say, well, of course it's in the Hebrew Bible, because Allah and Yahweh are the same God. Obviously it would be in the Old Testament, because Allah and Yahweh are both moon gods. They were both worshippers, you know, they were both moon gods. That's a whole story. Boy, when you get into Moses and, uh, and understand that Moses was the leader of a lunar cult, he, worship, uh, he was the leader of a lunar worship. And today, the Hebrews still hold Moses in high esteem and high reverence, but never realizing Moses worshipped the moon. And he was leading people who would follow him in the worship of the moon. Even today, Hebrews still count their days from sundown to sundown. Why? Because after six o'clock, the sun is down. Well, if the sun's down, that means the moon comes out. That's exactly right. That's why the Hebrews are moon worshipers. They have their holy days from sundown to sundown. And their, and their Sabbath, the word Sabbath, which is very important even to Christians, to keep the Sabbath, the Holy Sabbath. Sabbath is a word in the official language for the planet Saturn. The planet with the rings, well, the, god, the, the god Saturn was Lord of the Rings. Well, of course, Saturn is Lord of the Rings. And Saturn in the old Phoenician Canaanite language was called Shabbat. S-H-A-B-B-A-T-H, Shabbat. Shabbat was the planet Saturn. So if you're going to honor your god Saturn, you, you pick out a day and you call it not Shabbat, but Sabbath. So the worship of the Sabbath is the worship of the planet Saturn. And, the, and Saturn as an ancient god was called by the ancient peoples of the Middle East, he was referred to as the inhibitor. Saturn was the inhibitor. He's the one that holds you back and teaches you a lesson. Uh, and so he was referred to as the inhibitor. There were originally... And so, and, and so right. what, I, what I was going to say is that being an inhibitor, <clears throat> the Jews said, well, if he's going to hold us back, and he's the inhibitor, then why don't we just do nothing? On his day, we, he doesn't have to hold us back. We're not going to do nothing anyway. So he doesn't have to hold us back. He's also, <clears throat> he doesn't have to teach us. He's also Kronos. Huh? Right, right, Jordan? He's also the representation of Kronos, <clears throat> uh, the, the inhibitor. This is where we got our word calendar, you know, from Kronos. And there were originally, what, uh, 12 uh, commandments, right? And that's they right. come from well, Egypt. Well, yeah. right. It's uh, the negative confessions I've heard you state. Yep, 12 negative confessions. That's Egyptian. Go, in the, go on the web or go to a library and look up the word negative confession. And you will see it's a subject that's been known for many years that the Egyptians had 12 commandments. Now the Hebrews took the 12 and, and dropped two of those commandments. So today they have 10 commandments. No, it was 12 commandments. And the 12 commandments were Egyptian. And it was not called commandments. The Egyptians called the 12 laws, the 12 negative confessions. And it, it goes something like, I will not cover my neighbor's wife and his... And his uh, property. I will not lie on my brother. I will not steal from other people. Uh, these are the things I will not do. Well, the Hebrews turned around and said, you are, God said, you are not supposed to do this. You're not supposed to do that. Well, the Egyptians get, uh, just got to say, that's not what we're, we're not going to do that anyway. Well, they so got it from Egypt, things. right? The A-10. I mean, there was 12 commandments originally, but then the Egyptian A-10, A-10, that's pretty much uh, 
Well, the Aten making it shorter. Is the sun god, the Aten. That's right. And incidentally, the Aten is the name of, a, of the sun god in Egypt. But there was another term from the Aten, and that was Aton, A T O N, the Aton. And the Aton is Aten. Look it up in the dictionary. It will say Aten is the name of a god, the god of the sun, was A T E N, Aten. Uh, but there was another way to spell it, A T O N. So he was Aton, which gives us uh, you know, Pharaoh Aknot Aton. And so uh, this is why the Hebrew word for God is tetragrammaton. The tetragrammaton is the Tetra grammar at time because tetra is is uh, is four uh, grammar and letters so it's the four letters for the name of God what is the name of God God is at time so we have something called the tetra grammar at time or the tetragrammaton amazing the four letters for the for the Hebrew God well the Hebrew God is the at time tetra Grandma at time. Right. And you know, John, they say that that we're we all have a little bit of God in us, but that humanity's made up of atoms. Yes, of course. So atom that, that's exactly atoms. Right. Atoms. It's the etymology right there, the occult etymology that you're known for, my that's friend. Right. I'm telling you, it's fascinating when you start of breaking down the words and what they mean and the etymology of words and ideas, concepts, and belief systems, and you start finding out that Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, all three major religions, can be traced directly back to their mother, to the parent religion. There was one religion in the ancient world given to me today. Christianity, Judaism, Islam all came from Hindu. They were a Hindu religion. And so it's, it's an interesting story about how Hinduism has influenced the three major religions today. Uh, and why do we have three major religions? That's another interesting story. Why three? Christianity, Islam, and Judaism, all three. Why? Because God is always a triune God. There were Brahma, Vishnu, Siva, Osiris, Isis, Horus. Father, Son, Holy Ghost, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. <laughs> I asked the rabbi one time, was there really an Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? And he says, give me a break. <laughs> the, the, the Catholics have uh, uh, Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Hindus have Brahma, Vishnu, Siva. Uh, Egyptians had Osiris, Isis, Horus. God has always been a triune figure in all ancient civilization. So we got to have a religion. The Jews have a religion, and ours is based on Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, a triune Godhead. And then when you find out Abraham, as I said, goes back to uh, Hindu. And in and, and, uh, and Egypt, even today, as it was thousands of years ago, there's a priesthood in India called Brahman. And the Brahmins will tell you they are God's chosen people. You see they a lot are, of you see a lot yeah. of snake worship in India. Yeah, yeah. All, all around the world, actually. Absolutely. And you Absolutely. know, Jordan, I know you said you've never seen a reptilian, but yeah. I, I know they're out there. I know that the dark, malevolent forces uh, are, are out there. Whether well, metaphysical, I mean, they've they've been with us. I mean, we we talked about the Watchers. But I feel that they're out there. They're the ones, the cosmocrats. They are the ones. That's exactly right. They yes. are the cosmocrats. And that's my and that's my uh, my new video is on that subject. And I've been trying to do something with that subject for over fifty years. I've been looking at it and studying it from every angle. I have finally, after all these many years, I have finally been able to put together a video. Finally on this subject uh, for people to see and understand why the scriptures talk about cosmocrats uh, when the Apostle Paul said that we have a war against the world rulers of darkness. World rulers is cosmocrats. 
Oh, and they rely on uh, virginal blood sacrifices. I mean, going back to the Aztec times, even oh, now. Sure. I mean, if sure. you see the, the, the dark phrase, the, the, that frightening phrase, uh, the dawn of a new day that's used by Hillary, that's used by Obama, uh, that I even see being used in, in the Trump administration. I mean, that phrase, I mean, it, it, it's frightening that that these dark powers, I mean, the, they feast on, on the most, uh, on the weakest uh, and uh, the, the children, you see that with the whole Pizzagate thing going on. I mean, it's it's hit the mainstream, but they're saying it's fake news. Uh, wh- what do you make of that, Jordan, that whole uh, thing? I mean, well, I, no, I think it, it's it, the, it, the damn reptilians. Well, if you remember, the scripture said the whole world is lying in the power of the wicked one. It doesn't say the whole world except Alabama. <laughs> the whole world except America. So it doesn't have any exceptions. It says the whole world is lying in the power of the wicked one, which is actually, in point of fact, true. The entire human race has no idea in the world how the cosmocrats work, how the powers over us are so well informed and intelligent. Scientifically, they operate with a mind control and high technology, and they're manipulating us so that we go to war and kill each other. We drink and we uh, live off of uh, of drugs and kill each other. And It's just amazing how the human race is manipulated by higher intelligences. And the reason why it works is because people are not open to what is called uh, intellectual truth, intellectual honesty. People do not want to think that they are being ruled and, and, and manipulated. So that's, you know, like the scripture says, uh, when uh, pride precedes the fall. So when you're proud and arrogant and think that you are in control and nobody's, nobody's messing with you, that's the time you're going to slowly but surely become so sold on yourself that you're going to end up in serious trouble because you think you're so smart. How many times have we seen pride preceding a fall? When Adolf Hitler thought he was going to rule the whole world, you know, a few weeks later, the whole country was destroyed. So when he, you think you're going to do something, you better go back and, and, and get a little humility. And he had a one-way ticket to Argentina after that. <laughs> You know, Jordan, they're, they're so evil. I mean, they, they're they among us. I mean, like this uh, Barbara Bush quote, the beautiful mind quote that you've stated a couple oh, of times. She said, why should we hear about body bags and deaths? It's not yeah. relevant for my beautiful mind. I mean, she's a reptilian. I mean, they walk among us. But if I say that to, uh, you know, any average Joe, they're going to think I'm batshit guano crazy. Oh, of course. They'll probably get your teeth knocked out, too. <laughs> well, I don't know. I could fight pretty good, so, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I hear you. No, they 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 just don't compute. I know, I know. But I'm just saying, the reason why is because the real enemies you cannot see. They are spiritual in nature. They're not from here. They're extraterrestrial. They are able to show themselves. Sometimes you will. Humans have been able to interact and interface with extraterrestrials and see them, some have been abducted by them, but usually these extraterrestrial powers are energy fields, and they are are intelligent, they're here, but you don't see them. We see them through the the symbols that they have appropriated uh, in in the corporate world, all over the place. I mean, if you like a fancy car, let's say the Alfa Romeo car, what does it have? It has... Uh, to my, uh, you know, uh, intelligent mind towards the occult, because again, of occult, occult means hidden. I see a, a snake and uh, the Knights Templar flag right away, like like that, because I've been studying brain. the thing. Yeah, and you, like I said, you don't have to be an astronaut or a brain surgeon. It's right there in your face. Look at it. No, the and Nissan. The Nissan. I mean, the Toyota. Uh, all these of symbols, course. Saturnalian symbols. That's what I've been saying for years. Look at the flags of the world, all the different flags and the colors and the symbols. All of those flags mean something to everybody else. 
It's like the symbols going through the Mexican neighborhoods or black neighborhoods and you see the graffiti on the wall and, and adults driving through think it's just a bunch of uh, hoodlums uh, messing up and, you know, and, and graffiti. No, it's not graffiti. Those symbols uh, sprayed on walls are telling you something. And if you don't understand what those symbols mean, you better get out of that neighborhood. Because if you're wearing the wrong colors or a, a member of the wrong race, you're in serious trouble. Uh, trust me, I, I know. I, I grew up around uh, uh, Los Angeles, you know, Southern California, Inland Empire area. and uh, You don't understand what I mean. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> anyway, like I said, I have on my website, and incidentally, my website is quite simple. Jordan Maxwell Show, S H O W, Jordan Maxwell Show, dot com, and when you go on Jordan Maxwell Show dot com, you will see that I have two new videos for for marketing. One's called Cosmocrats, and the other is called Re Revealing Ancient Secrets or Ancient Mysteries. You need both of them because both of them complement each other. One is the ancient mystical symbols of the world that used in Christianity, Judaism, and Islam. And then the second one is called Cosmocrats, or the world rulers of darkness, and how they have used those symbols in Judaism, Christianity, and Islam to manipulate the whole human race. So... If you're interested in this kind of subject, then get my two new videos. They're on my website, jordanmaxwellshow.com. Absolutely, and be sure to uh, subscribe to Jordan's awesome research society. I mean, you you are definitely uh, getting a lot of uh, members, and that that's a great thing. Well, I appreciate it. And also, when you go on my website, Jordan Maxwell Show, uh, there's also, along with my two new videos, there's also, I've had it on for some time, uh, a research society. You'll see a, a banner saying Jordan Maxwell Research Society. You can join that. It's only a one-time $30 contribution for a, a lifetime subscription to my work. What it is, uh, a research society uh, website is simply a new website that has all of my research I'm putting on there. Little by little, I'm putting up all of my research material, all the documents, uh, and, and interesting articles, research articles, pictures, um, audio, video, all kinds of extraordinary knowledge and stuff that I've been collecting over the years. And I'm putting it on this website called Research Society. So if you want to avail yourself of my work, then join my Research Society website. And the reason I do that is because I'm keeping my research work private. I'm not putting it out into the world because I can get in trouble with some of the stuff I have on that Research Society. I've got, I've got documents and things which might bring me some trouble. So I don't put it out there in public. I put it out in private. So if you want to be a part of my, my research society, you don't have to join because now I'm protected if it's in private. So you can go on my uh, on my website, Jordan Maxwell Show, and join my research society for thirty dollars for a lifetime subscription, one time, and you can avail yourself of all of my work over the years. I'm putting it all on there. As soon as I can. My, my webman is working around the clock trying to put it all on. Literally a library of knowledge you yeah, have. That's all it is, just a library of hidden knowledge. Amazing, Jordan. You know, I want to congratulate you, Jordan, on your Lifetime Achievement Award from the Conscious Life Expo. I've had the privilege of interviewing uh, many great uh, authors, such as yourself, uh, and uh, it's just great. That, that you come on this show, it, it's amazing. I'm writing a book, actually, The Language of Symbols, and I state you as probably my primary, my primary major influence, you know, and it's just awesome to get to speak to you on a one-on-one -on -one and also to have my audience uh, be enlightened by your endless amount of knowledge, and I want to congratulate you on your uh, 
your terrific shows on Infowars. I mean, amazing stuff you're doing right now, Jordan. And uh, thank you for having and the time thank you for to be on my on. show. Very kind of you to allow me to come on. Excellent. We can always do it anytime you want. So I'm always here. Thank you, Jordan. I'm going to send you a copy of, of my book. And, uh, you know, uh, you, you're going to be the, the first guy to read it. So, uh, you're, okay, you're, well, I'll tell you what. You let you, me know if it's you, good. You email me first, <laughs> and I will give you a correct address now that I have moved. Okay. I'll give you a new address to send anything to me. So, you you email me and tell me you want to mail me something, and I'll send you back a new address. Brilliant. Thank you, my friend. Jordan okay. Maxwell, ladies and gentlemen. Bye-bye. See you, Jordan. Thank you so much. You too. Bye-bye. That was Jordan Maxwell, ladies and gentlemen. And we're out of time. He hit it out of the park. Home run show. Thank you for listening, folks. Catch you next time.